All right, what's going on, guys? Trev back again here to bring you another review for Breaking Bad. This one for Season 5, Episode 4, which is called 51, basically letting us know of uh, Walt's age. So I was not aware that Walt is uh, 51, or maybe they are 50, and maybe they said it before in the series, but I just forgot. Uh, also, I thought it was really cool in this episode that we got to find out that from the beginning of Breaking Bad right up until now, it's been exactly one year uh, in that world. Uh, which I think is kind of crazy because we've gone through four full seasons. So much has happened. And in Walt's life, that's really only one year. Um, so I thought that was a pretty cool takeaway. There was a lot of little symbolism with time in this episode. You had that. And at the end of the episode, of course, by the way, this will contain spoilers. Uh, although there was nothing too major that happened in the episode. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. But there was no major deaths or anything. So spoilers, but not a big deal. Um, at the end of the episode when Jesse gives Walt the watch and it's ticking, ticking, ticking as it's going. And, you know, earlier on the season when, when uh, Mike talks about Walt being a, a time bomb, just tick, tick, ticking away. Uh, very cool symbolism. Also at the end, of course, you've got Skyler just there sitting there smoking, not saying anything. And you got to think to yourself, like, has Skyler become like the new villain, so to speak, of the show? You know, uh, one thing I like so much about Breaking Bad is a lot of times the threat uh, for our characters comes from within the group or within, you know, people that are close to them that they care about. A lot of times it doesn't come from the outside. Like, for example, um, Walt worked for Gus. Gus made Walt rich beyond all reason. And then everything that happens afterwards with it, you know, it's it's everything is very... Uh, a lot of times the threat comes from, from the inside as well. Uh, not the same with Tuco at the beginning, uh, necessarily, but a lot of times. And I think that's pretty interesting, too. Uh, a lot of cool moments in this episode, although I do have to say that I find Skyler to be painful to watch at this point. Uh, extremely, extremely painful to watch. And I actually can't stand her character at all anymore whatsoever. I just want them to just... To just stop focusing on Skylar at all. You know, she had her point. She did her thing. You know. That's it, man. I mean, come on. You know, like, some of the things she said in this episode were just ridiculous. Like, you just don't say to anybody regardless of, of whatever they do. Like, she says to him, and I'll wait until the cancer comes back. Like, oh, my God, man. Like, that's just dirty pool miss dirty pool and well speaking of pool she's you know Walt's talking about it's his birthday he's talking about the past year of having cancer and everything like that and you've got this attention self-centered attention whore that walks in the pool and pretends to kill herself or you know tries to I guess uh, I did think it was good though that Walt was the one who jumped in to pull her out but at the same time it just kind of felt like well I thought that was okay I mean, I, that that seems pretty natural to me because she might <clears throat> now be suicidal because she might hate herself for what she did to Walt. Um, you know, because you got to keep in mind, yes, he did some things that were wrong to obviously his career choices. Uh, she, she's not a big fan of most people wouldn't be. Um, I'll get more into that later on. Talk more about uh, what he does. But, um, you know, that's the choice that he decided to go with. They were broke in the beginning, which is partially her fault anyway, because inaction is still... Uh, action. You can't get a pass just because you are not acting. You know, she did not have a career. She did not really have a job or any income, you know, and they were broke as shit. And that's why Walt had to pretty much do all this stuff. And that was part of the catalyst that make him that made him break bad is that she wasn't doing anything. So, you know, she's not entirely innocent either. She didn't help out the family the way she should have or anything like that at all. So that's one thing. And the other thing I want to say, too, is that she mentions in this episode, too, a couple things about, you know, what he's doing and how it's wrong. And from a business perspective, here's an interesting thing that a lot of people don't know about business. This is something I could do a whole video talking about this by itself. But people in the in the real world, if they want to make good money, if they want to make a lot of money, they have to do what the market wants them to do. So people can have interest and say, you know, I love this. This is my interest. This is what I, do, what I want to do with my life. But if the market doesn't need that, it makes no sense to do it. I'll give you an example. Let's use a small example. You have a town of 50 people, okay? Or let's say 100. In that town, you have, uh, let's say, I don't know, out of 100 people, let's, let's do something like this, okay? So let's say... I don't know, half the town or, or, you know, a quarter of the town, let's say, um, is into building houses and that kind of stuff. 
would it make sense for you, even though you love houses and you know you, you love to build things, would it make sense to you, for you to do that when everybody else is doing it? No, you wouldn't make any money at it, or you'd end up working for somebody else and being paid hardly anything. Um, and that's because the market basically, there's no need in the market for someone to do that. So basically what I'm saying is that if there's a need in the market for something like this, someone will fill the need because the money will be there, giving the people what they want. It's their choice to want something, okay? But then for a person to actually give it to them, create it for them, if one person decides, hey, I'm not going to do it, someone else will, will come in and do it. And that's just, that's the nature of the market. When people want things, those needs are satisfied by companies or people, and those people who satisfy them usually become rich. And that's the fact of the matter. So a little bit of business marketing there tied in. But the point is, is if Walt doesn't do it, someone else will come in and do it too. It doesn't matter, you know? So that's why I think he is pretty good. And also at the same time, like, you know, it's these people's decision to buy it. You know, he's producing it because the market wants it, but these people are the ones who are buying it and using it for themselves. He's not at fault just for creating it, in my opinion. Um, these people really are the ones that should be, you know, should be uh, held accountable because they're the ones they're the ones who are buying it. If they wouldn't buy it, then there'd be no reason to to sell it. It's not like Walt's, you know, like pushing it on people and this kind of stuff. You know, he's not doing that. He's just producing it, and then people obviously want it. So. Those are my thoughts on that. Um, I'm so tired of Skyler, man. So tired of it. I've just had enough of it. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with her, or what Walt's going to do with her, if he's going to kill her or something. Or I mean, God damn it, how can he not want to? I mean, she must drive him absolutely insane. She's the biggest bitch in the world. Now, some people have asked me, somebody asked me, do you hate Skyler more than Lori from The Walking Dead? And absolutely I do, man. Like, probably ten times as much, seriously. And it's probably just because they keep like revisiting this over again. Like I feel like we've we've been through that before. They were able to work things out, you know. They got back together, and now she's gone back into this shit again. And I mean, I guess it's kind of natural because a mother would always want to protect their, her children. But at the same time, you know, women also want to have a protector there as well. And Walt obviously is an insanely strong dude. Uh, taking out Gus Fring like that and everything like that, he's just he's the Don now, man. You know, he's in charge. He's running shit. And even if he goes down, the family's not going to necessarily, you know, go down to like, like they're not going to be thrown in jail. The kids are not going to be thrown in jail or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, whatever. I just, I'm just tired of that storyline, the whole thing with Skylar and, and her issues. I just want that to end and be over with and not see any more of that whatsoever. But I know we're going to, cause she's, She's kind of like, there isn't really a villain in the series right now, I guess you could say, like a main villain, but she'd probably be it if you were to choose one. Of course, we have Hank as well in this episode to get some time, and uh, he gets promoted, which is good, because then he'll be off the Fring case, uh, and pretty much will be out of the picture when it comes to Walt, as, as far as my understanding of it was, because he'll be looking at, you know, he'll be working on um, sort of like the management of uh, of the police and the cases and stuff so that way he won't be individually you know like a field agent like that so that's good for him because then if uh, if another agent gets too close you know mike walt jesse they can put a hit on him so or whatever and it'll be okay now to do uh which i thought was all cool everything with that was good uh marie and hank going in the car to uh see walt and skylar i thought was okay the silence where they're all sitting around there was kind of deafening and uh, i thought it was shot pretty well where you see walt talking and in the background you can see this this freaking retard being an idiot attention whore and self-centered loser. <laughs> I just don't like a character at all. Such a selfish bitch. Selfish, selfish, selfish. And also, too, like, if she's going to act this way and all that kind of stuff, I got to say that she does not love Walt or care about Walt. She's just self-centered all the way through, 100%, no question about it. Okay, going on from there, we also get to see some cool scenes with, uh, with Jesse and uh, Lydia. Lydia, of course, uh, her pal Ron, who was doing some of the, the handiwork for her, got caught. And um, now Lydia is in a position where she kind of wants to get out, but she can't. Mike believes that she placed this uh, tracking device on the bottom of one of their barrels of um, methylamine. And um, Jesse doesn't believe him, thinks it's probably the cops. So... I don't know, man. This is interesting. Is Mike right or wrong? I mean, I tend to think that Mike could probably be right. Because if, if the cops were doing it, then 
they probably wouldn't have even noticed, at least not yet. Uh, like you said, they probably would have put it inside the barrel somehow uh, to track it so that it's he thinks it's Lydia and that she's going to turn on them again. And, and you'd think she would have learned her lesson by now. I mean, going to jail sucks, yeah. But, you know, she's got to look out for her daughter and her own health, you know. So she's got to do... She's got to do what Mike says. So I thought that scene was cool. And also, too, it's kind of left, um, you know, open as to what's going to happen. And, and, you know, like everything to do with that situation is really interesting because it's all left open. We don't really know. Like, did Lydia put it on there? We don't know. It, it seems like it because they didn't check the other barrels and she told them to get that barrel and it had one. But, you know, then again, the cops were sniffing around in there. They did see Ron, all that kind of stuff. So... Pretty interesting. I mean, it could go either way. Um, Mike wanting to kill her. My understanding was that is that uh, Walt is, you know, they want it. Walt, Walt wants to go ahead with it, so he's not going to allow Mike to kill her just yet, or at least Jesse and uh, and Mike won't, or Jesse and Walt won't allow Mike to do it. Uh, I don't know, man, because Lydia kind of seems like a rat to me. That's for sure. And uh, you know, it's got to be tough for Mike though too. You know, you have to kill her, but he's uh, he's pretty cold, man. It's all there. Okay, she's dead. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's awesome. He's just a really cool character. Uh, and then, of course, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention was the argument between Skylar and Walt. Again, kind of painful to watch. Um, but uh, I liked how Heisenberg totally took over there and was like, you know, like going at her and asking her specifically what she's going to do and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, just, just letting her know who's boss here, who's in charge. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know. Oh, I hate Skyler so much. <laughs> so let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to give this episode a 9 out of 10. I thought it was a great episode. Less Skyler, more other stuff. Uh, replace her scenes with other things that are going on because she just is a terrible character and I hate her. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought about uh, Breaking Bad Season 4 or Season 5, Episode 4, uh, 51. I enjoyed it. And kind of cool that uh, this has only been a year in terms of his time. And the symbolism of the ticking clock is time ticking away for Walt. Let me know what you guys think. Later, guys. Peace.